Well, we're here at NTED 2013 uh, as a conference sponsor. Uh, it's Learning will be sponsoring uh, all of the IATED events this year, and we're thrilled to be here in uh, Valencia for our first time for sponsoring NTED. We chose NTED 2013 for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is that there is a wonderful international community of educational technology uh, scholars and researchers that are attending the event and presenting uh, the many great things and the research that they've, they've been doing. So we as a cloud-based learning platform provider offer teachers, lecturers, and students uh, a wonderful set of tools to interact in the digital classroom. Our cloud-based technology is uh, fully scalable, robust, and with an open architecture allows the integration of third-party applications uh, right into our solution so that at the end of the day our clients have a very, very tailor-made and custom solution at their university or respective uh, organization. People often want to know what makes its learning different and you know, how are you different from uh, open source technologies or other commercial platforms that have been around for many years and the answer is very simple. Its learning has been around for 14 years. Uh, we work with some of the largest institutions in, in higher education like the University of Copenhagen in Denmark and our cloud-based solution is extraordinarily easy to use. It is extremely user-friendly. Uh, the, the interface is, is visually appealing and the fact that you can integrate third-party applications into our software uh, really s sets us apart from, from most of our competitors, whether they be open source or commercial platforms. I think that's a great question uh, and I think it, it really varies by market and segment of the market what what levels teachers and students are for new educational technologies. I would say in our experience uh, in, in the Europe and the United States uh, usage of technology in the classroom is, is nothing new. Uh, it's certainly been around since I was a, a young child working on the Apple II GS uh, but, but uh, I think in general technology is advancing at, uh, at, at very rapid rates. The advent of tablets in the classroom, whether that be the iPad or uh, other mobile devices is really changing the game for uh, how teachers, students, and parents are involved in the learning process. So the, the notion of 24-7, 365 uh, you know, online, offline, uh, teaching and learning is, uh, is, is very, very much happening right now. So I think, I think it very much mer varies by market, uh, the receptiveness of, of new technologies in the world. Um, but, but in general, in, in Europe and the U.S., uh, the demand for our, our technology is, is very strong. Yes, and technology adoption uh, amongst countries varies. Uh, there's a host of factors that, that go into this mix. Uh, one of the first and foremost, at least as it relates to us, as a, as a browser-based uh, technology, is that uh, broadband connectivity is, is very much a dependent factor uh, when it comes to the market's willingness and uh, receptiveness to, to a cloud-based uh, learning platform. Uh, the second thing has to do really with uh, the number of computers and or mobile devices in the classroom. So the, the ratio of technology hardware to students and teachers in the class. Uh, generally when that ratio approaches the one-to-one -one level, uh, that's, a, that's an acceptable level for, for the types of technologies that, that we and our competitors offer. And that varies uh, wildly by market. Uh, so I think in generally speaking in, in, in Europe and in the United States uh, there are some uh, some countries, some counties, some municipalities, some cities that have excellent broadband connectivity 
uh, very high ratios of, of hardware uh, to students in the classroom. And uh, so in those types of scenarios, uh, those markets are very receptive, whereas if those two, two of those very critical factors uh, are not in place, uh, then that would make the, the market less receptive to the technology. One of the most important things to add is that uh, a strong drive from a central government, such as a Ministry of Education, is, is one of the most important uh, drivers of, of technology in the classroom. So if there's a, a, a country where the ministry has a very clear, uh, concise, and um, very, uh, very, very good plan for implementing new technologies in the classroom, um, that, that can also have a, good, a very strong effect on uh, the market's readiness. Well, of course, uh, my mother was a teacher for 30 years, and uh, I think that in, in education and in uh, software and or hardware in education, any time a new technology comes around, uh, there will be people who are resilient to change. And that's, I think, a universal truth. It is, it is certainly present in education, uh, but it's also present in, in, uh, in corporate corporate uh, companies as well. So really I think the, the resistance comes from the idea of, of, of change and it's our responsibility as a software provider to execute excellent service delivery to make that transition as seamless as possible. And with its learning we have, we have a great global organization that is capable of, of large-scale implementations um, and we've been doing it for many years so we have a great recipe that helps that transformational and organizational change be as smooth as possible. Uh, that's a good question and I think that's one of our very competitive advantages. Uh, our interface, our software, has multiple interfaces. So we can offer our technology from very, very young learners, uh, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, kindergarten uh, through the primary years, middle years, uh, and, and diploma years, uh, whether the, that be lower and upper secondary or however you'd like to classify that, all the way to university and even PhD level. So I think that uh, our technology is very much suitable for, for all levels of, of learning and we support lifelong learning. We have some great examples in our organization of, of teachers doing professional development and school districts and cities doing the same to help educate their teachers. So it goes beyond just the traditional student model. Uh, our technology is very intuitive, very easy to use, and, and therefore I'd say it's, it's certainly um, adaptable and, and, and fit for all levels of, of education. Okay, well, that's a, that's a great question, and, and I think it varies, the answer to that question varies wildly depending on who you ask. I think our software has a plethora of tools, uh, whether that be uh, individual learning plans, supporting e-portfolio, uh, a very robust planner, um, uh, differentiated learning for, for all different types of learning types. Uh, I think that most of, uh, of our teachers and educators that use our technology probably find the fact that it's very easy to do things using our technology. Um, uh, and I think that uh, it really, that, the answer to that question varies wildly on who you ask, but the fact that the user experience is very intuitive and that you don't really have to think very hard to just do what most teachers do, create assignments, create tests, follow up their students, communicate with parents via email, um, and, and, and all the while, uh, you know, having that as a very, very positive user experience, I think, is what they, they value the most, but you'd really have to ask them. <laughs> the answer to that question is, is, is rather simple. Um, we are very much um, out in the world. We are presenting research at various uh, academic conferences. 
Um, we, we, we sponsor uh, our teachers uh, to, to be a part of some of these events and to present their research. Uh, we also have a, a very large team of, of uh, former teachers uh, in our company that help, uh, help design the platform for us. We have re researchers that are doing educational research uh, with some of the, the top uh, uh, minds and, and uh, academics in the world uh, as they relate to uh, educational technologies. For example, we have a, a gentleman with our company named Morten Falvik. He will be uh, attending John Hattie's conference in Brisbane, Australia later this year uh, with some research that he's been doing. Um, so we are out in the world. We attend some of the best conferences uh, that are out there, like NTED, and we have the, uh, the, with the ability to, to not only do the research, but also to listen to our clients. Uh, we have an ideas portal, which allows our users and our customers to give us their ideas, tell us what they want the software to do. And generally speaking, our software is, is, is very robust, and it's very, I would say, it's very advanced, uh, all the while being very intuitive and easy to use. But there are, on occasion, really great ideas that come to us from our customers. And we're not afraid to make customer commitments uh, when we need to for what I would call uh, uh, functionality that pushes the envelope and takes that technology to the next level. Uh, now, of course, those are strategic, but we're willing to do it. Uh, we do s update our software four times a year. So we're always making sure that our clients have the best functionality that we can offer. The advantages that its learning offers uh, compared to other technologies out there is that we are a cloud-based solution. And what that means is that uh, our, our software is available, we host it, which means that there's a very low total cost of ownership for a university or a city or a municipality. So we host the technology, we maintain it, we keep it secure, we back it up uh, so that you don't have to do that. Additionally, we update it and keep it current so that the technology is always available and always, uh, always the newest version that we have. Secondly, we have an open architecture. Our open architecture allows the integration of third-party software, content, and, and various other types of integrations to our learning platform. So that when teachers and students log into the platform, they don't have to go anywhere else. Everything is in its learning, whether that be e-portfolios, whether that be a very robust test, test and assessment tool, uh, whether that be an integration with Microsoft's cloud-based offering. Uh, all of these, uh, these, the fact that we have an open architecture and can integrate third-party applications and content is very much a competitive advantage for us. And above all of that is the intuitiveness and the ease of use that our technology offers. I think what I've enjoyed most at INTED 2013 is the very warm uh, experience that you have with the community of people that are here from all over the world. Uh, I think the organizers have done yet another superb job of organizing uh, an event that, that really showcases the best of what's happening in educational technologies in, in a wonderful venue of Valencia, Spain. So the atmosphere is wonderful and I think that's the best thing about the event. I'd say the most interesting thing for INTED 2013 is the number of people that have attended from the Middle East. Uh, I've attended EduLearn and ISERI in, um, in Barcelona and Madrid, but uh, here at this event I found a lot of people from, from the Middle East, Bahrain, Qatar, uh, UAE, just to name a few. The fact that Saudi Arabia, the fact that there's that many people here from the Middle East uh, is, is something that was very surprising to me. Very interesting because, I, again, I've been to the uh, IAT, sorry, EduLearn and ICERI events uh, in the past. So.